Hey guys, this is chapter 23 from A Boy Called Bat, Windows. Try two. Some days, Bat was the first person awake. It didn't happen often because Mom was a morning person. Usually when Bat woke up, he went straight into the kitchen to find Mom sitting at the table with a cup of coffee and a book. But every now and then, Bat awoke to a completely quiet house. <laughs> wow. It's really loud out here right now. A sleeping house. Tuesday was one of those mornings. Bat woke up suddenly and completely to a still dark sky outside his window. He blinked and sat up, slipped his feet into his slippers, took the skunk sling from the doorknob where he had hung it the night before, and went into the living room. I wonder if one of my other animals is going to come and introduce themselves. The living room windows faced the front yard. Bat could make out the shape of the big oak tree on the lawn. It was a darker shadow against the velvety early morning sky. He went straight to Thor's enclosure and found the kit tucked in a sleeping corner, surrounded by the rice-filled socks that made a nice padded nook. He stroked Thor's back, feeling the rise and fall of his sleeping breaths before gently scooping him up. Thor let out a little high-pitched yawning sound his tiny paws swimming through the air as Bat settled him into the sling. Once inside, Thor rustled around for a moment before quieting back down. In the kitchen, Bat opened the refrigerator as quietly as he could and retrieved the formula. He filled the syringe and held it under a stream of hot water to warm it up. Thor could smell the formula. Bat could tell because he wriggled around in his pouch. It's coming, little guy. Bat said. When the formula was warm, he went back into the living room and curled up on the window bench. Already the sky was changing. It was still dark, but now Bat could make out the branches of the tree. He heard the very earliest morning birds, the ones that sang each day as the sky began to lighten. Gently, Bat reached into the pouch and pulled out the skunk kit. It was too dark to see clearly, but Bat didn't want to startle him by turning on a lamp. So he brought the syringe down to Thor's face and let the skunk find the tip by smell. As Thor had his breakfast, the sky turned violet and pink, and then an orangey red. The tree's trunk lightened from black to brown and its leaves transformed to green. The first birds called louder, waking up their friends, and they became, they became a chorus of song. <clears throat> Bat looked down to see if Thor had finished his formula and gasped in surprise. Oh! The two tight slits that had been closed since Mom first brought him home were open. Bat could see Thor's eyes. They were the darkest black Bat had ever seen. Hey there! Bat cooed down at Thor. Good morning, little kit. Thor kept licking at the tip of the syringe, but his quick pink tongue hesitated just a bit when Bat spoke. Maybe he was listening. Maybe he understood. Bat stroked the back of the soft black and white fuzz on Thor's little forehead. I see you, he said. Do you see me? Mom emerged from her bedroom, tying the belt of her robe. Bat, she said, you're up early. Mom, Bat said, look, Thor's eyes are open. Mom came over to see. Well, look at that, she said, resting her hand on top of Bat's head and petting his hair just as Bat stroked Thor. His eyes are beautiful, Mom, Bat said. Don't you think his eyes are beautiful? Mom sat down on the window seat next to Bat. I think that's the first time I've ever heard you mention someone's eyes, she said. Most eyes are boring, Bat said, but Thor's eyes are amazing. Look, they are the color of outer space. They're open. Bat, Mom said, what color are my eyes? Brown, Bat answered, still staring at the skunk kit. Droplets of formula hung from the little black and white hairs all around his mouth. Nope, said Mom, they're hazel. This caught Bat's attention. Really? He looked, and, he looked up and stared at Mom's face. Her eyes were golden brown with little flecks of green and yellow in them. They look like marbles, Bat said. I never noticed. Well, you never have been all that interested in people's eyes. Bat shrugged. I never thought about it, he said. Look at these cute little eyes. There we go. Hi, Luna. 
Some people say you can tell a lot about a person by looking into their eyes, Mom said. What do you think about that? Bat thought about it. Mm, I don't get it, he said. If I want to know something about a person, I ask. I think you can tell more about people from what they say than from their eyes. Hmm, said Mom. You have an interesting way of seeing the world, Bat. Bat stared deep into Thor's space black eyes. He tried to see what he could learn from them. He looked first into the left eye, and then into the right, and into the left again. It's hard to look into two eyes at the same time, he said. Which one am I supposed to look into? I don't think it matters. Try looking into my eyes, Mom said, and see what you can learn about me. Bat tucked Thor back into the pouch. Mom took the syringe and set it down. She took Bat's hands into hers and smiled at him. Bat smiled back, and then he tried to see what Mom's eyes could tell him. The left eye had three more flecks of green than the right eye. The right eye had one more fleck of yellow. The black points in the middle were exactly the same size. Her eyes were shiny. Hazel is cool, Bat said. It's like a rainbow of all the boring colors. Funny bat, Mom said. Do you know what I see when I look into your eyes? Brown and black, Bat said. With white all around. Yes, said Mom. I do see that, but I also see your sweetness and your thoughtful nature and your busy, busy mind. And there's Mom at the window seat looking into Bat's eyes and Bat looking back and the big oak tree in the back. It's getting later in the morning so you can see the branches. Bat looked away. It was uncomfortable to let anyone look into his eyes for too long. It made him feel kind of itchy and shy. You can tell all that by looking into my eyes? Yes, she said. She leaned forward and kissed Bat's forehead. I see all of that and more. And do my eyes tell you that I'm hungry? It's almost time for lunch. That's the end of the chapter, and I'll see you soon.